Okay, hi there and uh, welcome to our third uh, lesson in our online series, Head Start to Economics. We're going to spend a little time looking at aspects of unemployment in the labour market. Now, when we come to an important concept, we will take a moment to define the term so that your knowledge of economics can grow. So what is unemployment? Well, it, unemployment measures, tries to capture the number of people who are out of work, they're without a, uh, without a job, but crucially who've been actively seeking work within the last month and they're available to start work within the next fortnight. One of the key measures of unemployment is the rate of unemployment, and that is defined as the proportion of the economically active population who are out of work. Now, the econ economically active population are those people who have a job, plus those actively seeking work. As this chart shows, the unemployment rate in the UK has been falling steadily since it's peaked towards the end of the last recession in 2011. Indeed, by 2019, as you can see, the jobless rate, measured as a percentage of the labour force, had dropped below 4% in 2019, raising hopes that the British economy might, for the first time in many years, might come close to reaching a situation of full employment. Now, there's different definitions of full employment, but the one I like is a situation where the number of job vacancies left to be filled equals the number of people actively seeking work. Well, this unemployment chart for the UK will inevitably look very different in the next few months and certainly over the course of the, of the next year or two. The economic crisis resulting from the global pandemic has led to severe social distancing measures, as you know, effectively locking down many parts of the economy. And as a result, hundreds of thousands of people have already lost their jobs and millions more have been furloughed by their employers who are looking to take advantage of the job retention scheme. If we just take a quick look at unemployment rates across the European Union continent, they do vary quite widely. Uh, the average at the end of 2019 was 7.4%, but there's big variations in Greece at 16%, double digit unemployment rates in Spain and Italy. Contrast that with Germany, the Netherlands and the Czech Republic, who have very low unemployment rates, indeed lower than the UK's rate of 3.9%. However, again, keep in mind that 2020 will be a very, very different matter. Unemployment is already rising quickly in many EU countries, and as you know, Italy and Spain have been very badly affected by the, uh, the coronavirus pandemic. <clears throat> We're going to look at some causes of unemployment. In this video, we'll take a look at three of them. I mean, some changes in unemployment are, are in a sense, inevitable. And a good example of that is something called seasonal unemployment. Seasonal unemployment. And this basically means at different times of the year, there are fairly predictable seasonal changes in jobs and employment because of seasonal peaks and troughs in demand. So there are lots of jobs in farming, for example, that are seasonal fruit picking in the summer, <clears throat> maybe employing some extra staff in the winter months to fell and then sell Christmas trees and so on. <clears throat> Tourism and uh, hospitality, likewise, are two industries where there's a strong seasonal aspect. More jobs, for example, in the peak times uh, in coastal and ski tourist resorts. So seasonal unemployment in this is, in a sense, inevitable. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic, of course, is having a big impact on global tourism and many of the industries that depend heavily on tourism for their demand, revenues and profits. This chart shows that, for example, Italy and Spain uh, are highly exposed in terms of jobs to the coronavirus pandemic. Travel and tourism contributed over 13% of Spanish and Italian GDP last year. Direct contributions from the hotels, travel agents, airlines, restaurants, and of course, lots of other industries depend on tourism for their demand. The UK, of course, tourism is still pretty big, 9% of GDP. A second cause of unemployment is frictional unemployment. This is caused by people moving between work. Perhaps they're seeking a better job or perhaps they're in between different careers. Every year there are school and college leavers joining the labour market, looking for work, take a time to, uh, to find the best job. 
equally there could be people coming back into the labour market from career breaks. Cyclical unemployment is caused by a persistent lack of demand for goods and services. It's also known as demand deficient or Keynesian unemployment. And cyclical unemployment is going to be the main focus, I guess, at the moment as we experience a recession. The last time there was a severe rise in cyclical unemployment was in the aftermath of the global financial crisis, which essentially started in 2007 and worked its way through in the following years. And we know that the world economy this year is going to be in recession. There's no doubt about it. Cyclical unemployment will be rising because demand is falling. The crucial concept here is that spending and income are linked. It's often said, for example, that one person's spending in the shops, for example, is another person's income. And when spending falls in a recession, well, then businesses in other markets and industries, they may suffer and have to choose to lay off workers or perhaps even close. <clears throat> and as businesses lay off workers, as employment contracts, well, this then reduces spending and demand in the local economy because one person's spending is somebody else's income. <clears throat> Over 26 million people in the United States have already filed for unemployment welfare assistance just in the last six weeks. This is a quite staggering chart. Uh, economic forecasts for the year ahead seem to get more gloomy by the day, with the Financial Times reporting here that uh, uh, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, is predicting that the world economy is heading for the deepest downturn since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Global aviation is a stark example of what can happen when economies go into lockdown and governments close their borders to all but essential passenger and freight transport by air. So there is clearly a significant increase in cyclical unemployment as we speak, as you're starting your studies in economics. We are undoubtedly already in a recession, but could this turn into a deep and persistent depression? One of the best definitions of depression is shown on the slide here. An economic depression is a persistent and severe downturn in output and jobs. And where an economy is operating well below, for a sub substantial chunk of time, well below its productive potential, what it could produce. Looking back to the 1930s and the Great Depression in the United States, here are a few stark statistics. Um, the depth and the scale of the depression is shown by the fact that the depression lasted for 43 months. The peak in GDP to the trough, the fall from peak to trough was 26%. In other words, the economy shrank by a quarter. Industrial production fell by 46%. Share prices fell by nearly 80%. And unemployment in the labour force increased by nearly 25%. And this, this chart shows that it tracks the rate of unemployment in the United States each month from 1929. You can see the increase, the steep increase, as the Depression took hold. And it stayed pretty high, then started to fall more, more quickly as the economy started to recover in the mid-1930s. And the uh, Covid crisis has prompted economists to, to be really quite gloomy in their predictions. So this is one set of forecasts uh, published in uh, March 2020, which is suggesting a fall in employment of around 40, 45 million people in 2020 in the United States. And this could take unemployment in the United States to 32%, the highest ever recorded. Well, I think it's a good idea for you to do a bit of research on this. How bad will the rise in unemployment be? Uh, perhaps as part of your uh, research work during the summer ahead of taking economics, you might want to find some examples of businesses that have closed or examples of businesses that have had to lay off some workers as a result of the global economic crisis surrounding the, the coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic. Do a bit of research and choose an industry and see how, how badly it's been affected, or perhaps an industry that is where employment has gone up, where more people are being employed as a result of the pandemic. So uh, that's the end of the first video. In the second video, we're going to take a look at a particular and important cause of unemployment, and we call that structural unemployment. <laughs>